Today's Analog by Design show is sponsored by Tektronics. Tektronics provides next generation test and measurement solutions that can help you solve your toughest design challenges. With over 55 years of experience, Tektronics brings you the latest advancements in probes, oscilloscopes, logic analyzers, and signal sources, as well as application-specific software from Tektronics. From the high-performance analog IC design and manufacturing capital of the world, it's National Semiconductor's Analog by Design Show. Here's your host, the guru of analog, the one and only, Bob P. Good afternoon. This is Analog by Design from National Semiconductor with host Bob Pease. And a cast of thousands. We've got a lot of people coming in here today. And our first topic, well, the first topic is, hello, Paul Groey. Hi, Bob. And hello, Paul hey, Rago. How are you doing? And do we have a guest with us today? We sure I do. I bet we do. We've got one of our favorite pals, Tektronics, the stuff we love Very to good. use. And the person from Tektronics we're going to see today is Mark Albert. Mark, come on down. He's the product marketing manager for Tektronics uh, Signal Source product line. He's been with the company for eight years, and he's responsible for function and arbitrary waveform generators. He has an MSWE from the Technical University of Darmstadt, Germany, and an MBA from the University of North Tar Carolina. Welcome, Mark. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Now, it just so happens we're going to be talking about function generator stuff and good high-tech stuff. So let's see. Oh, let me just show that off to the side. Um, when I started in this industry only about 45 years ago, Dinosaurs they, they gave me this yeah. dinosaur-equipped, dinosaur-powered heath kit function generator, and I said, you go out and make sine waves with that thing. Well, we did, and we could even make square waves, but we couldn't make pulse trains or couldn't make different duty cycles until we discovered there was a trim pot right back there. And rather than build a hole in this thing, we put a long shaft out through the top of the case and built a hole in it and put a knob on it. So now we had a duty cycle adjust <laughs> at the top of this Heath Kit Science Is that generator. 20 megahertz? Or? No, that was 2 to 20 um, times anything where it would go all the way down to 20 hertz. And, I think it went to 20 kilohertz. I don't think it went to 200 kilohertz. Kind of like an audio. It was just what you just minimally needed for audio. And you're doing tube amps. For oh, these were tubes, and we were working on tubes. And we were also working on solid-state amplifiers, too. And I still like to use function generators with triangle waves. Now, what do you get from a function generator? You can get your sines and your square waves and your triangles. And then you can adjust the duty cycle to get different sawtooths and trapezoid and little pulse trains. And you can get noise. And you can get uh, AM modulation and FM frequency modulation. You can get sweeps. And you can get arbitrary functions. And in this instrument we're going to be looking at, Tektronics AFG3252, it's a 200 megahertz function generator. And it can do all of the above. Is it 200, Mark? Is it 200? Actually, it's up to 240. Uh oh, it's 240. Oh, no. Analog PowerPoint. Wait, Check wait, this uh -oh. out. Correction, correction. I like blue. That's good. 240. 240 megahertz. <laughs> Very good. Uh, now, I mentioned all these things it can do. Did I leave out anything? Oh, yeah, Paul. What? It, it, well, it can do all the things you listed, but there's yeah. also some other modulation standards like phase modulation or frequency ah. shift key. And there's also another br uh, mode that many people use, a uh, burst mode. So, uh, those are some of the things the instrument can do. And also it has dual channels, so you can actually to do uh, two different uh, signals, one sine, one square, or ARP, can be any combination, all, also uh, at different frequencies. Well, that's a lot of capability, and every once in a while when you really need it, that's really useful kind of functions to have. So we have all these capabilities that are pretty impressive in one little instrument. And I guess we'll be looking at that more in a short time. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. Now, what was the next topic? The next topic is, do we have any hot new analog 
Implement. Yeah, I always like to ask Paul because <laughs> I'm over building G now. And I'm not up on all the cool parts coming oh. out of the amplifier group. You need what? to reach over and put that thing in here. Oh, okay. Yeah. What oh, do you first going over? Oh, there? we got some high, new high-speed parts, the LMH 6702 and 6559, which actually brother and sister. Basically, one is the op-amp version of the other. One's a buffer, 6559 closed-loop buffer, basically yeah, buffer, and an LMH 6702, which is the general purpose op amp version of that that's a nice 1.7 gigahertz uh, op amp oh, so and very very low distortion you can always make that. an fm radio <laughs> <laughs> it's 75 megahertz it's got minus 67 db dbc yeah. uh, dbc oh, and that is. means Pull it's it way the heck down there uh paul you, you took some of these measurements yes that was uh well me and joe yeah mm -hmm. but we have you ever seen any amplifier with lower distortion than this uh, no, not really. Yeah. It's I know it blows okay. away the... Boy. I was looking at competitive data sheets. It's payment. hard to make generators clean that far. Oh, down. yeah. <laughs> it's rather hard. Uh, uh, Payman, the design manager, was saying you could use this as a gain block. Instead of paying thousands of dollars for a gain block in a Tesla where you have to buffer a signal to drive 50 ohms, you could use one of these parts, and your distortion will be instrument like Tektronix quality uh, distortion mm -hmm. numbers. Mm -hmm. So this is a pretty exciting part. Very good. Okay. Any other uh, technical stuff we want to look at in here? That's Mostly right. it was just this page. And you can look these things up on the web and print them out yourself and have fun with them. Right. This is just but a data I sheet. I like that low distortion. Yes. Yeah, it's awesome. And mm -hmm. then there's, there's another part, this video part we're going to look at. We, we have a little demo after we look at uh, some arbitrary waveform stuff. We're going to do a demo of this. Uh, we're going to show you how to turn your old computer monitor into being able to watch DVDs. Oh, cool. Without a computer. HDTV into a computer monitor. A standard computer monitor. Are we going to look at that now or later? We'll watch it. We'll see that after. We'll, we'll see, see that after. Take okay, time. fine. Okay, now, are we ready to go to the lab? Yeah, what I are think we ready so. for? Mark, you want to show us some of this yeah, good stuff? Yeah, sure, sure. Very good. Let's okay, we're going to well, bring, uh, bring in Claude Turner, who works on our, a lot of video products. And so Claude's going to meet us over there, and then later Cliff is going to show up, and he, he helped to find this like video said, part. a cast of cast thousands. Cast of thousands today. Oh, man. Wow. Let's go meet Okay, let's go over there and bring in Claude. All right, we're over in the lab segment now. We've got the cleanest bench we've ever seen for a real engineer, but we wanted it pretty for all you people who appreciate it. Claude Turner's here. Claude's an assistant engineer in our amplifier group. He's worked with CRTs and video signals, and he got real excited about this equipment because it can do tests that competitive machines can't. It's fast enough to do that. And, of course, Mark's here. Mark Albert's still here. Mark, can you show us a little bit? We're going to have Claude show us what he used it for. But if you could just give us the basics on why this is a cool piece of equipment. Sure, yeah. Let's take a closer look here at this instrument that we have here. You see the... Uh, model number here is the AFG3252. That is actually a member of a complete product series, and this happens to be the top end of the, the range. That is, um, as uh, Bob already explained before, a function generator, a pulse generator, and also an arbitrary waveform generator, all in one. Um, this instrument has the capability of generating sine waves up to 240 megahertz, um, arbitrary and pulse waveforms up to 120 megahertz and it does that with a sampling rate of two giga samples per second. Now that's uh, pretty powerful for such a, a small instrument and uh, what enables this instrument for this top performance is a new technology that Tektronix invented and put in here and we uh, call it a generator on a chip, GOC. And, um, there's one single uh, integrated circuit here, a custom a, uh, IC, that incorporates the direct digital synthesis waveform generation, the waveform memory, the uh, digital to analog conversion, and the modulator. And uh, that is all contained in a single chip. And that makes all this performance um, available in a compact form factor and, and at an affordable price, uh, well below $10,000. Right. The user might not be able to see, this is a lunchbox size. It's mm -hmm. like the real, so it's only that deep. So it'll fit on your bench mm -hmm. and give you plenty mm -hmm. of room to have your other test equipment, mm -hmm. your, your test device under test. Right, exactly, yeah. And we got all the standard uh, functions on here, sine, square, ramp, pulse. You can select it all with a button push. And what's unique about this instrument is uh, that it has a large screen that shows all relevant uh, instrument settings at a single glance. If I uh, may point out some of those here, for instance, we see 
the frequency, we see the phase, we see the amplitude and the offset here. And we also see a graphical representation of the waveform. So the user gets uh, full confidence in the instrument setting. By just looking at the screen, he can already see what's coming out of the uh, instrument output. Now, uh, the instrument has also modulation capabilities. For instance, amplitude modulation that we see here. And now in, we see on the screen also the modulating source, the uh, modulating frequency, the wave shape, and the modulation depth. So there's a lot of information that you see, can see at a single glance. Now, uh, going on uh, through those functions, let's take a look at the pulse functions, for example, here. The pulse waveform, uh, that has independently variable uh, leading and trailing edges. We uh, simply select that here by pressing the sh shortcut key and then as we uh, change the parameter, the image on the, on the screen changes. And uh, if you look at the output with an oscilloscope, you see the same yeah, down below change. we have a scope. Right, you see. That's my favorite yeah. thing about this. You're not guessing, yeah, right. and you're not tying up scope channels. You can trust what's coming out of it because it exactly. gives you a picture. Exactly, That was yeah. That was just a yeah. pleasure. Yeah. We should mention, too, it's two channels, right? It's available exactly. as a two-channel box if yeah. you want it. Right. So if you want to do differential things, mm -hmm. my laser driver stuff with uh, differential inputs mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. you're trying to get rise times, this would be great for that. Right. And it's fast right. enough, exactly. which is rare. Yeah. And with those two channels, you can either generate completely different waveforms at different frequencies, or you can do something like synchronously with the same frequency and a phase shift in between channel one and two. All that is possible. And I didn't mention uh, yet, we, well, we do have the arbitrary waveform capability. And what uh, it's unique about this box is you can actually read arbitrary waveforms from a USB memory uh, device. You uh, simply insert that memory here just like right you on do the front yeah just <laughs> That's like great. you do on a computer uh, and then you uh, can import a waveforms here just to select the memory you select the directory you want to choose and um, and all those waveforms are on the stick you just plugged in. Huh? Right. The screen gives a list of what's stored on the stick here. Oh that's cool. Right and then you just uh, select whatever you want to load and the instrument loads mm. it here we have, we're looking at an I square C uh, data signal. So you can actually simulate a, a low speed a serial data yeah, stream. Yeah, complex with bus, bus mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you put, how do you come up with the arbitrary waveforms to put on the USB stick? Is yeah, that's a good question. Well, you can do it on the instrument, but uh, more conveniently, you can do it with a piece of software that's included with uh, this box. It's called ArbExpress. It's a PC software. But it comes with the box. It comes with the I box. I thought you had right? to pay extra for it because it did so nope, many things. Nope. It's, it's all included, and it allows you to, to generate, uh, to create waveforms uh, from standard functions, sine square, and you can do a um, um, freehand edit add uh, anom anomalies or distortions to it. Um, you can also import uh, waveforms from any of the Tektronix oscilloscopes, directly transfer, acquire the signal you want to si simulate here. Uh, you load it into the software, maybe modify it, and then uh, yeah, write it onto USB memory, and then off you go. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's one thing that's good to do is uh, it's really easy to create good waveforms for your circuits, but it's another thing to put some, throw some little unexpected problems into those waveforms and see how your circuits mm -hmm. react to it. Put mm -hmm. little glitches in right. your sine wave, mm -hmm. you know, put that's a little extra glitch in here and see how your circuit... Right, that's what Claude told me. He said there's all kinds of s standard video signal generators that make a perfect within spec generator, but mm -hmm. what this will do will let you capture it or come up with your own mm -hmm. and start moving the mm -hmm. pulses. Right. And, mm -hmm. and he was playing around quite a bit with that and mm -hmm. had some good results. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. Purposely distorting your signals. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then there are also an, a number of other capabilities. We don't have time to talk about all of them, but just to give maybe one more example, if we uh, have any uh, type of signal and let's say we want to um, add some noise to it for like um, limit testing or, or just see how the device responds if the signal yeah. has a little bit of noise. I in do it. filter stuff. We've got our web bench filter mm -hmm. designer mm -hmm. and it's real curious as well. The filter's supposed to take noise out. Mm -hmm. And so if you could generate the noise, that'll tell you and make an easy, right, easy, right. trivial test set. Right. And we actually that. do have a noise generator uh, integrated for each of the channels that's so built in and you simply select that noise function here. You, you turn it on and then you add a noise level to it. So, 
and uh, you see how the signal gets yeah, gets on the bottom noisy on the scope. here. Yeah, that's great. And yeah. you could do it to any. That, that would apply to both an arbitrary signal that you created or right. any of the CAN signals, right. square, sign, exactly. triangle. So yeah, if we hit sign, uh -huh. we can actually a make a noisy. Sign. Oops. Yeah, we'll have to quickly go back to that menu. All right. Okay, and we can. Oh, mm -hmm. look at that. And just dial in how much noise you want. Exactly. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Anything else you wanted to mention? Um, the instrument also has standard communication interfaces on the rear. GPIB. LAN, GPIB, right. That's also great. USB. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So you can talk to this USB? Yep. Oh, that's great. And by, and by the network. Mm -hmm. So this is a 14-bit? It, it has 14-bit uh, vertical resolution, right. 14-bit? So yeah, it's making pretty pure sine waves if mm -hmm. you've got that many mm -hmm. bits to make your... Mm -hmm. Yep. So you get good spectral purity Very clean signals or high frequency resolution. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a good thing. This is what Claude got excited. Claude, you mentioned, hey, I've got a test that my present equipment, competitive equipment, won't do. What was that that, that you used this for and set up a test for? The engineer came to me and said he wanted a test to evaluate the overload recovery on an amplifier that he was looking at. And what he really wanted was a uh, one megahertz signal that went from one volt peak to peak to 50 millivolts peak to peak and he didn't want any artifacts on the change and I couldn't do that with any of the generators that I had before because the the only way I could try and do it was with amplitude modulation and none of them were fast enough to shut the signal off with this I generated um, a waveform mathematically we'll back. it's the first one that we loaded yeah. in just a second. Look, yeah, look, how, look how this is, this is spoils us. Look how easy this is. This is a, a waveform that I generated mathematically, whereas it's, it's got five pulses at one volt peak to peak and then five pulses at 50 millivolts peak to peak. And you'll notice that there's no strange artifacts at the, yeah, the, there's no at overshoot, the change. And that's really being measured. That's from the scope. And uh, uh, the, that's the last thing you want is some interesting artifact, which you'd get from uh, amplitude modulation here because you want to see what the amplif amplifier is doing and not what the generator is doing. Mm -hmm. And this worked out quite well for that. Well, thanks, Claude. That was great. Now we want to bring on another amplifier guy, Cliff Wynn. Cliff, come on in here and How you, you doing, change Paul? places with Mark. How you doing? Cliff hey, worked on this Hi. new part. It's an LMH-1251. What can you tell us about the part? Well, I uh, just wanted to show you the data sheet. This is LMH-1251. And what it is is it's a high-speed 2-to-1 video mux integrated with a color dematrixer, integrated with a sync processor. So going through the, the switching, you can, either, you can either have channel 1 or channel 2 video. And channel 1 video is driven by PC video from your computer or your laptop, or in this case, we have it driven by the Tektronix scope. Channel 2 is driven by an analog component video path, which is either your DVD player, your high-definition tuner, your set-top box, your VCR, anything like that. Right. I want to point out what's on the screen from the scope. It's hopping around a little. Remember when we added noise to the waveform? The generator isn't noisy. We added noise. We forgot to turn it off. Yeah, we didn't turn it <laughs> off. We're sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, so right now, now you can switch now with a little jumper, right? Right. Between so the right now, it's the, the Tektronix scope is, is driving the video. If I switch over to channel 2, we're going to go to a DVD player, that silver box up by Mr. Groey which yeah. is running. So now I have that. a DVD player. And so when I select this path, what happens is it takes the YPBPR video, strips the sync, uh, syncs off into horizontal and vertical sync, and then it does the color space dematrixing. So it goes through some linear algebra math and converts from the YPBPR color space to the RGB color space. So now basically you can turn in your old CRT monitor into a HDTV. Oh, that's great. It looks great. The, uh, they're not going to see it on the yeah. web, but the quality of that image is beautiful. You did a great job on this part. Yep. Thank well, you. Well, but it's, that's good because it's analog. It's it's not digital. Oh, that's right. There's it's no all digital. analog. <laughs> Bob's got to get that in. Everything well, is done analog. Done it right. <laughs> it's analog, and it's real precise. It's within 2.5% um, of color accuracy and uh, within about an, a 1 degree of phase accuracy. So it's, it's a real precise analog color conversion. So if you come from your, let's say, your DVD player all the way through here, this is a full analog path right to the yoke yeah. of the CRT. Or yeah. you can run it to LCD monitor, too. Right. Either way, 
Um, it's, it's a full analog path because you, uh, you would think, well, what if I put my DVD in my computer and play it? Well, that goes through a bunch of upscaling and downscaling oh, and goes through a bunch okay. of digital paths. So well, that's I, I know people like CRTs because the color uh, accuracy is better. The, you know, if you're doing sure. pre-press and things like that, they like CRTs. And then Precisely. the gamers like CRTs because the motion is Precisely. better. Precisely. Oh, you can actually run your Xbox, too. Oh, really? <laughs> Xbox, your PS2, PS3, Xbox 360 can go through this, and now you can play it on your computer monitor. Yeah, anything that has a standard... Analog, YPVPR. Yeah. And, and that board is our board. It's our eval board. Yes, it is. You can order it on the Internet. I looked it up. It's about $150. So all my, all my hacker friends are immediately on the web. Hopefully they won't run us out. But uh, we showed this at NAB. Everybody went wild over it. So it's a really cool video. LMH, is, is it in VIP-10? Is it in that CMOS process? 7. It's CMOS 7. Okay. 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 Yeah. The great thing about this is you can take your old CRT monitors and rejuvenate them to now be part of a kind of a little mini home theater. Uh, since you know, you've got that new flat panel, but you have that great old CRT monitor you bought years ago, it still works. Why not give it new life as a, as a really good video display? Yeah. And, and you need your CRT to keep your cat warm. Yes. Because he's getting so. really upset with that LCD. <laughs> yeah. Bob, anything else you want to chip in with? I think we covered all the points. I think we gave a good demonstration of several different machines. I think you've had a lot of fun along with us. I've had a lot of fun, learned a lot about some of these ICs. So thanks very much. Hope you had a good time too. Bye-bye. Uh,